Welcome to Corinth Baptist Church Wednesday night service. I want to welcome you again uh, to our online service, and we're so thankful that you're joining us uh, tonight. We have some announcements for you uh, for this weekend. If you can join us, uh, we are going to have a barbecue uh, drive up. Uh, we're going to be cooking the barbecue here. You can drive up and get that food. We're going to have bread for you, barbecue sauce, and um, as well as chips and and water if you'd like that. Uh, you can come uh, from 6 to 6.30. We'll be reserved for our seniors and also for those who will be delivering to homebound uh, folks in our community and our church. And then after that, 6.30 until uh, we run out, you can come by and you can get a barbecue meal here at the church, 190 Corinth Road, Gaffney, South Carolina. We have some great cooks and they do a great job with that and we'll have that ready for you you can just uh, pick that up in your car you don't have to come in and uh, we're so thankful for the opportunity to serve you in that way and to provide a meal for our church and community also on sunday uh, we will we will have a 10 o'clock service uh, here at the church uh, a drive-in service uh, you can stay in your car turn to 107.7 and uh, we'll be preaching out here on the front porch and have music out here on the front porch and you can be able to listen to that uh, through uh, your FM radio 107.7. So we're excited about doing that, a drive-in uh, church Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock we will have our normal uh, online service um, that we've been doing for the last couple of weeks uh, because of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, so uh, we'll have both of those services uh, uh, this Sunday. I have a few uh, prayer requests for you uh, to remember. Uh, let's do uh, continue to pray for our nation as uh, we are uh, battling the coronavirus and let's pray for those uh, who are making those kinds of decisions in our government and also our, our, our doctors and nurses and first responders there on the front line treating those who are um, infected uh, with this virus. Let's also pray for our communities, our families and during this time, those who are isolated. Uh, and we would, uh, we would say this, uh, don't feel isolated. Don't feel alone. You can call us. Uh, we can pray with you. We, we want to uh, share your prayer concerns. We want to pray with you. Uh, you can call us anytime. My, my number is 864-490-0882. The church's number here is 864-490. 489-8489. You can call us. Uh, you don't have to feel alone, uh, and we can talk uh, together about uh, your situation. But we want you to know uh, that the Lord loves you, and we do too, and uh, we, we are praying for you as families, as a community, as an individual, and uh, also we're praying for those who are experiencing job losses as well. So uh, continue to pray for them. Also, uh, some names that were given to me. Uh, Christopher Moore, uh, Larry Cashin, uh, Tina Teasley's daughter, uh, Jean Wells, as she continues to recover from being in the hospital, and Adam Paris, who is in critical condition after a motorcycle accident. So uh, let's do pray uh, for these as well. Uh, so I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and then we will go to the word of God tonight. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to pray uh, for these uh, individuals that uh, people have called in and texted in uh, today. Lord, we do pray for Christopher and, and Larry. We pray for Tina and Jean and Adam. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you would touch their lives and help them, uh, Lord, as they uh, go through this time. And Lord, we ask that uh, you would uh, be with our nation, be with our president, our Congress, our Supreme Court, Lord, all the agencies of the government as, as they're working so hard to uh, mitigate uh, this, uh, this, uh, the effects of this virus. Lord, we just ask that uh, you would just give healing to this nation. And Lord, I pray for all those who are out of work. Uh, Lord, all those who are struggling with isolation and loneliness. Uh, Lord, you be with them and strengthen them as well. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, just to pray for our church family as well. Lord, uh, we ask that you would bless each and every person, Lord, that's part of Corinth Baptist Church and all the churches in our area who are struggling because uh, we're not uh, able to meet as normal. 
Uh, Lord, you just encourage the believers and let them understand that they are the church, Lord, outside of these walls. And, Lord, we have so much love to share uh, with other people. And, Lord, we uh, pray for, for our services that are going on here as well as the services around our county and our country. Uh, this, uh, this coming Sunday, Lord, I just pray that the Word of God will be uh, proclaimed uh, boldly and that people will come to Christ. Lord, we ask these things for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to look at Romans chapter 15 tonight. Romans chapter 15. And I just want to begin by reading just a few verses and we will walk through more as we go. Uh, but Romans 15 and verse 1 says, We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached uh, you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus that you may be with one mind and one, one mouth, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that, that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to conform or to confirm the promises made to the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. And again Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and, and he shall ri rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I am not a skilled craftsman or carpenter. Uh, I'm not a building contractor or an architect. Uh, a few years ago, we built a house uh, and uh, we uh, talked to a builder and looked over house plans and uh, I was just uh, fascinated to see all of the pieces work together. Uh, the architectural drawings and how the contractor uh, maneuvered uh, through those drawings and adjusted those drawings and how all the pieces, all the, the skilled craftsmen came in and put those pieces together to make it a unit that would be a, a livable house. It was amazing to watch all of those pieces being put together in such a skilled way. All the different skill sets that came together just to put a house together uh, was amazing. But you know what's even more amazing? Is that God puts believers together and gives them the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the Word of God to make us one unit as a church, to make us one body, just like our physical bodies work together, all the muscles and, and all, the, uh, all the, uh, the physical processes of our biological body work together so that we can be healthy. And just like that, Christ has put believers together in the church and gifted them through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to uh, be together as one and to build each other up. So I want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about how to have the spirit or the mind of a builder. We are bodybuilders as Christian people. You say, what is my purpose as a believer? What, what do I know that God is calling me to do right now? Well, you can know this. If you don't know anything else, you can know this as a believer, that God has called you uh, to do two things. He's called you to be a bodybuilder, to encourage and to lift and to build the church of God through your gifts and through... Uh, the giving of yourself to the believers. And God has called you to be a missionary. God has called you to go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. 
Those are both commands in the scriptures. And here he tells us how to have the mind of a builder. How can we take it with us tonight that we are not just individual Christians. We're not lone rangers. We are part of a unit. We are part of each other and we are builders of one another. Well, first I want you to see here that that we can build the body of Christ for God's glory. To have the mind of a builder, we need to understand that it is for God's glory that we build the body of Christ. Not for our glory, not for the church's glory, uh, not, uh, uh, not for some kind of accolade or award uh, or, or some kind of bragging rights. No, we are called as believers to live for God's glory and also to be bodybuilders, to build the church of Christ for God's glory. Notice what he puts here uh, in, these, uh, in these verses. He says, We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Now what he's talking about is he's talking about the Gentiles and the Jewish believers in this one church. And the Gentiles were saved uh, out of paganism and they were enjoying the freedom of Christ. They were enjoying the freedom of being forgiven and the call of Christ upon their life to be missionaries uh, and to go into all the world and make disciples. And they were enjoying the freedom to, to build one another up. But <clears throat> he was also talking to Jewish believers who many of them struggled with how, what do I do with the law? All these traditions and all these special days and all of these ceremonies that once were part of my life and were important parts of my life, now that I've been brought into Christianity, what do I do with all of that? And sometimes uh, those who felt strong in the Lord, those Gentile believers, uh, had trouble bearing with the scruples of the weak, the convictions of those who were still struggling to get out of Judaism, to get out of those ceremonies, uh, to lay those things aside, if, if, if you will. So Paul says this. He says, you ought to bear with the convictions of the weak. Now what he means by that is this. He, he means that we must put the unity of the body and the growth of the body above our personal freedom. That we should be careful uh, not to offend our brother who is struggling uh, in, in, in freedom and struggling with a conviction that, that he was saved into. So this is what he says. He says, uh, secondly, he says, and not to please ourselves. So Christianity is not about us. It is not about pleasing ourselves. Living the Christian life and being a bodybuilder of the people of God is, is not to build a kingdom around us. It's not to get what I want and what I like. It is about serving others. And then he says, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Now he doesn't mean that we're to be people pleasers. What he means is this, that we should go about our daily life as Christian people ready to uh, ready to put our rights and our desires aside if that means it will help others be built up. Now that's a tall order. That means sometimes that you don't put that on Facebook even though that's your opinion or that's what you want to say. That means sometimes you don't say what you want to say uh, even though uh, you uh, cherish your opinion or you don't get what you want because that is not for the best of the body. That is not for the best of another Christian. So how do we do that? How do we live for God's glory first and not ourselves? How do we serve others first and not ourselves? Well, he gives us several things. He says, first of all, listen to Scripture. He says, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me, Christ bore our burdens. He was willing uh, to subject himself to the law in order to free us from 
the condemnation of the law. And then he refers to the scriptures as a whole. He says, whatever things were written before were written for our learning. If you want to know how to be a servant, if you want to know how to live for God's glory, read the Bible. Read the people of faith that lived by faith alone, that served God first, even to their own peril, that, that, that served God even though they were martyred for it, that served God even though it caused them pain and heartache. Those people, those illustrations in the scripture teach us how we can live for God's glory and put other people first. You know, have you ever watched a bodybuilding competition? I mean, those guys get out there and they have huge muscles and, and they're, they're toned, and that just didn't happen overnight. Those, those uh, ladies and gentlemen that do that, they spent hours and hours and hours in the gym toning their bodies, perfecting that so that they could be in those competitions. Think about that craftsmanship. You go to a wood shop and you see someone make a, a beautiful eagle out of a piece of wood. That doesn't happen by accident. That takes practice. That takes artistic ability. That takes uh, hours and hours of painstaking work. What I mean is this. If you're going to take pride in the Christian life, take pride in the right thing. Say, I'm going to live for God's glory. I'm going to put Him first. I'm going to put the church that He loves first. That's His brand. Now I've heard people say, you know, I take pride in my work because that's my brand. Well, what is the brand of the church? The brand of the church is Christ. His name is upon us. That's why we're called Christian. And if His name is upon us, should we not live for Him? Should we not serve like Him? Should we not seek to glorify Him? Build the body of Christ for God's glory. Be a builder that puts God's glory first. Secondly, build the body for gospel expansion. See, the second reason we're to be bodybuilders is not only for God's glory, but because the gospel needs to be expanded. And that is what Paul says here in these verses. He says, receive one another just as Christ also received us. And he uses the phrase in the Greek language here in, a, in, a, in an imperative sense, a present imperative sense. In other words, keep on receiving one another. There's never a, a time when we do not uh, we're not called to receive one another. We're always called to accept and to receive one another in the body of Christ. The church should be a place where Christians are received with grace and with mercy. Now, we're not perfect. We, we have many flaws. We will make mistakes. We will sin against one another. We should accept that. We should know that. But we also know this, that God calls us to love one another. And that's how the world knows that we are Christ's disciples when we love like Him. So we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the opportunity because what happens when we love one another and when we receive one another in that way? Well, we glorify God, he says in verse 7. And then he says, Jesus Christ has become a servant of the circumcision. What does that mean? Well, it means that he was submissive to the law in order to bring us salvation. Christ submitted to the law. He submitted to the law of the circumcision, the Jewish law, in order to fulfill it perfectly, to be our holy, perfect substitute on the cross. He died as our perfect substitute so he could take our sin. Well, what did Paul say about that? He said, because he did that, the Gentiles might glorify God and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. The Gentiles were brought in. That's me. I'm a Gentile. 
The Gentiles were brought in to Christ because Jesus obeyed the law. He submitted to the law and he submitted to the Father in obedience. That's why the, the book of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, who subjected himself to the cross and now is highly exalted. He is our example because he subjected himself to the law in order to expand the kingdom of God to all people and to redeem all people that come to him by faith. Build the body for gospel expansion. You say, well, why should I serve others? Why should I live in a Christ-like way and, and seek the gifts that God has given me through the Spirit of God and seek to honor God through the Word of God as, as the Word of God instructs me, I want to obey it. Why should I do that and, and serve my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ? You should do that because by doing that, you are expanding the gospel influence into the world and into the community. No pain, no gain. It's hard. You know, we, you hear that all the time, that there's no pain. It, without pain, there's no gain. This morning, I, I walked up a really tall hill uh, early this morning, and I was hurting. I was huffing and puffing. But when I got up to the top of that hill, I said this. I said, you know, I need to do this more. I need to get in shape. Because when, when it's hurting and your legs are burning, your muscles are, are, are having trouble, and you're breathing heavy, you know that you're benefiting from that. And it's hard to serve Christ. It's hard to forgive others. It's hard to love like Christ loves. But if we submit to the Spirit of God and to the Word of God, and we allow Him to change us and recreate us in Himself, what we will find is what comes out of us the service and the fruits of the Spirit and the works of God that serve and edify the body of Christ will also serve to expand the gospel kingdom work throughout the world. Be a bodybuilder because you want to see God glorified, but also be a bodybuilder because you want to see the gospel expand to more and more people. I see too many Christians who are, are living for themselves. People who claim Christ, who are living individualistic lives. And you know what I see also in their life? No gospel expansion. No service of other, to other people. They're just living for themselves. That is not the Christian life. The Christian life is a call to die to yourself daily to take up your cross and follow Christ who died for us, who served us, who fulfilled the law perfectly so that the Gentiles could be brought in to salvation. Are we willing to do that kind of heavy lifting to see the gospel expand? Are we willing to do the hard things, to serve in that kind of way, to forgive when we don't feel like forgiving? to serve when we don't feel like serving, to love when we don't feel like loving. That's a choice of the will. It's not based on feeling. It's not based on selfish motives. It's based on the, 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 the example of Christ. I watched an interview of Nolan uh, Ryan uh, back in 2006. And he said, he said this. He said, God gave me a gift to throw a baseball. And I didn't realize how great that gift was for many years, but now I understand that God gave me the gift to throw a baseball. God gives you gifts as a believer through His Spirit. God has given you His Word. And with both of those things, He has given you enough to glorify Himself to serve the church, and to share the gospel with others. 
Listen to what Paul says in verse 14. He says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able also to admonish one another. These are three great gifts that God gives us through His Word and through His Spirit. First of all, by God's grace, we are given virtue. Notice what he says, goodness. We're, you're, you're also full of goodness. The Christian person, as they submit to the Spirit of God and to the Word of God, is a person of virtue. There's so much vice in the world. There's so uh, much selfishness and sin in the world. But the Christ-like person is a person as they submit to the Word of God and the Spirit of God, virtue pours out of them. Then by God's grace, Paul says, you're filled with knowledge. Not just knowledge, book knowledge of something, but he uses the word here, knowledge by experience. Experiential knowledge. Knowledge that can be proven. When you serve God and you live for God and you submit to God's Spirit and God's Word, you will have a knowledge of God that is experiential. Not just theoretical, but you will know God as you read, him in, in, uh, read about Him in the Word and experience the fruits of the Spirit coming out of you. And third, by God's grace, we're able to encourage and admonish one another. This, uh, th this uh, phrase here, able also to admonish, it's a, it's a mild, um, it, it's, it's a mild encouragement, a correction, if you will. It's not a, a stern exhortation, but, but it's a, a gentle steering of the Spirit. And Paul said, by the goodness of God, and the knowledge of God, you can gently steer one another toward the right way. We need each other. Boy, do I feel that in my spirit now, being away uh, you know, from, from many, many church people. I, as a pastor, I feel the need to be with my people. I feel the need to be with my church family. But we should never forget when we have the opportunity to be back together again. That being together means more than just fellowship and more than just congregating together. Being together as a church means that we are unified. Our, our, our calling is together. Our mindset is together. Our praise is together. We are unified in spirit because we have a unified goal. And as we have that unified goal and we unify in our spirits together, our gifts and our knowledge of God helps one another to gently steer us toward Christ. My prayer for you tonight is that you would appreciate your place in the church. You would appreciate your place in the kingdom work of God. That you would appreciate the church. That you would... Grow in your love for the church right now. That you would also know that we need each other. All of us are part of, of a body of Christ. And the gifts and the knowledge and the grace that we have together, we can work for the kingdom. We can see the gospel expanded. We can see people built and edified to be what Christ wants them to be. And ultimately, we can glorify God. That is my prayer for us tonight. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and look at your word tonight. Thank you for the privilege of being a part of your church. Lord, you've called us by your grace not only to be saved and to be a part of your family, but to be a part of one another. And Lord, we love you and we thank you for making us uh, into the body of Christ through your grace and your spirit and your word. 
Lord, I pray for every believer that will hear this and watch this video, Lord. I know that there's much discouragement right now because we can't be together. Lord, just encourage their hearts and let them know how important they are. Lord, to encourage and to uplift one another. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Good night.